Mm -hmm. All right, welcome back to CIS 126. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So we're continuing what we started to do last time with a little bit more advanced drawing techniques and the like, so that we can do the first assignment, the model sheet, which then segues into the first or the big project of the uh, game. Now, I'm gonna continue from the last drawings that I was making, and I will usually put a copy of my work um, in Canvas, if people want a copy of that to get started with, or you can continue your own, especially when we get to the coding part in a few weeks. Sometimes your code doesn't quite work, and it would be better to start with my starting point instead of trying to figure out your issue. Now, of course, we'll give you plenty of help myself, and the assistants will give you plenty of help when we get to the code, but sometimes it'll be a little easier just to start with my starting point. And what I mean by that is I have it right here in the live session, week one practice. I'm gonna download my own work and I'm gonna open it and animate. You could work with your own work from Monday and we'll add to it. So that's what we're gonna do at the moment. We're gonna to add to what we started on um, Monday. So I'm opening up my project. What I wanna look at today is other techniques of drawing. You had plenty of practice with that back on part one. But especially um, if you want to make your drawings in such a little bit more three-dimensional, we'll cover aspects of uh, coloring with gradients. Gradients will make your characters more three-dimensional. And we'll also cover tips and techniques and such for the other parts of the model sheet. We've got the turnaround, which we spent time on last time about setting up lines and grids and so forth. We saw the process of starting with stick figures, then fleshing them out a little bit more with, you know, basic shapes. And then we went on to the next sketch version. And then in my case, okay, I've got pretty much then the complete version here and I got to do the rest of the body and such. Well, the coloring, the color model sheet is the other, um, is the other part of this first assignment. We've got the turnarounds, the colors and the expressions. Uh, I'm going to look at, um, colors, and then we'll do expressions. So from this that I downloaded off the web, I'm gonna save, save a copy. Let's see here. Uh, as usual, make, your, make sure you're saving your stuff in a folder. Sometimes there's a few quirks that happen if you don't save your files into folders. So week one, B practice, I guess. What I want to do here is, um, okay, this is, we set ourselves up that we're using scenes. Uh, we're using scene one or the turnaround model, sheet scene, scene two, expression, scene three, colors. Uh, obviously mine is not done yet, but I would do the whole three angles of this character. But I have enough here to do the next things that I want to do, which are the colors. Your turnaround, remember your turnaround model sheet is not required to be all colored in at least black and white with the three angles is fine. I'm gonna go over then and do the color model sheet. Now, previously I already created a scene called colors and there's nothing there. Maybe more efficiently was that I duplicated a scene and then added to it. You know, hindsight is 2020, but that's fine because I wanna show you some techniques that might not be so obvious. Once you learn them, they're very useful. So what I'm saying is maybe I could start with this scene one and just duplicate the scene and change it. Okay, instead of doing it that way, which is just click to duplicate, I'm gonna transfer things from one scene to another. You have to do that oftentimes, working with many scenes and then uh, you didn't duplicate the scene at the right point, that's okay, a little copy and paste. Copy and paste works in many ways, which is very interesting, uh, confusing and annoying, but once you understand the differences, it works very well. I want to copy what I've drawn so far from turnaround scene into colors scene. There's many ways to do this. A powerful way is I can, for example, here on this layer, I can click on the icon of the layer, or I can click on the left edge of the layer right here. And what that is doing is it's doing like a select all. I've got one frame, many drawings, 
And when I click on the layer, it selects everything. If I had multiple frames and I click to the left of the layer, it does like a select all to all the frames. I can then right click the layer and copy the layer. And I can go over to my colors scene, click on the uh, layer one that's empty, right click and paste layer. So that copied perfectly the complete layer back from my first scene to my third scene. It didn't copy the name of it, which is funny, but it copied all of the frames. Now that kind of copy and paste might be useful if you've got an animation because you have multiple frames you wanna copy from scene to scene. In my case, that's not exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna show you again multiple ways. Let's say I didn't copy, let's say I didn't do it that way, um, which is select the whole layer. Instead, I can, I can click on the particular frame that I want. And when you click a frame, that does also a select all, but only on that frame. So again, pretend I've got five frames of animation, but I don't need all five frames of animation. Clicking on the layer selects all five frames of animation. I don't need that in this case. I only need all the drawings of this one frame. Okay, so clicking this one frame does select all for this one frame, and then I can right click that frame. So it matters, are you right clicking on the stage? Are you right clicking on the layer? Are you right clicking on the frame? All of them give you slightly different things. This is the, the weird thing about animated is very specific. But once you realize the specificity, you can have it do what you need. What I need at the moment is only on this one frame, right click that one frame, copy that one frame. When I go to my other layer, uh, my other scene, I can click to select the frame I'm going to replace right click, paste frame. Now, even here, we've got a couple of options. Paste the frame or paste and overwrite the frame. What that is doing is if I already had something on a certain frame and then I right click paste frame, it may completely erase what's there or it may push over what's already there. So in my case, what I want is I want it to most likely paste and overwrite. And so that erases what was there and adds something new. In my case, I have an empty frame, so they both get the same result, but be aware of that. You have paste frame, which may push another frame out of the way, or you have paste and overwrite, which will erase the current frame. Depending what you need, you have those two options. In my case, I'm gonna do paste and overwrite, and so that copied my drawing back from scene one to scene three. And I'll continue with what I want to do here via colors. But what I just wanted to show you here is you will often have to copy elements from different scenes onto other scenes. Three ways to do it. Duplicate the scene completely. It may copy too much. Or select the layer copy the layer, it may copy too much, or copy the frame, and it might copy what you need. The final way to copy is, okay, let's say I've got several things on this one frame. I've got the character and some lines. If I were to obviously select the whole layer and copy the whole layer, uh, the whole frame, it's going to um, paste everything that that frame had, including the squiggles that I don't want. So the fourth way to copy is you you selectively select what you actually want to copy from a frame, right click on the thing you just selected, copy that. It doesn't say copy drawing, copy lines, it just says copy. Then when I go to my other frame, do a right, right click, I've got paste in center, paste in place. Paste and center will put it right in the center of your new scene. Paste and place puts it in the exact X and Y coordinates from previously. So yeah, if you're in Microsoft Word, there's just copy and paste. That's easy. Take this word, copy it, paste it here. In anime, I've shown you four ways to copy and paste. 
And then there's like two subtleties on those two ways, paste in place, paste in center, paste frame, paste overwrite. So copy and paste in this app is way more complex than just Word, but very useful if you know what to do with it. If I wanted to copy and paste it in the exact place, you got to do the right click paste in place. It'll put it exactly there. If you need it to be exactly in the center, right click paste in center, it will put it where you need it. I want to put it in the center because I also want to maybe resize my drawing. Ideally, I want the whole figure drawn so that I can do the coloring. Right now I'm doing the color scene, the color model sheet, but this is as far as I've gone, so I'll use this as the example. I'm setting myself up for the cuddle color model sheet. This layer as flat, I'll name it as flat, and then another layer as um, gradient. I'm going to do a flat color, and I'm going to do a gradient color. We've seen flat color on part one, which looks nice. If you know what you're doing, you can make the character have a little bit of depth, but with the classic flat coloring, often like called cell shading. But today we'll look at also the gradient coloring, where you can have beautiful blends going from different colors to make the character seem more 3D setting myself up to do that. Um, what I'm gonna do is my flat layer has my drawing and my gradient layer has nothing. I'm gonna copy what's in my flat layer into my gradient layer. And I just showed you four ways to do it. I'm gonna do the uh, select the frame, right click the frame and paste onto the gradient layer frame paste overwrite. So I have the exact same drawing on two layers. I lock the gradient for the moment and work on the flat layer. All right, so flat coloring. Quick recap from back on part one. This is about dividing up your drawing into sections and then filling in a color. I'm going to uh, do a very easy light source. Let's say there's the sun or a lamp on the left side over here. And the, um, the light source is, you know, casting light in this direction. Very simple light source going across the character this direction. And so if I have a light source in mind, I can then use it to do the colorization. So the idea is that there's going to be the brightest side, the brightest colors of the character near the light source, and then darker versions of the color away from the light source. It's a very simple way. There's more complexity to do, uh, but very simply, areas that are darker are further from the light source. Areas that are brighter are closer to the light source. So the idea here is there's going to be dark colors on this side and then brighter colors on this side of the character. Now, yes, to be way more complex, uh, we have to take into consideration, okay, there's, in my character, I've got hair, tufts, and I've got big old eyebrows, cartoony eyebrows, and then a nose and such. So the idea is that uh, to really be complex and think in three dimensions, I have to have, you know, the uh, dark area of the nose, but then a dark area that falls on the, on the snout, not just simply all of this side here is dark. I'm not going to get that complex just yet. We're just going to think bright on the left, dark on the right. 
if your light source is like that. And we're seeing that as I try to color, well, oops, my lines are gonna go, my color is gonna go over the lines. The technique that I showed back on part one is that if we use the line tool, setting it to some other color, thickness, and then making, making lines to divide up the character, well, I've set up an area that can be filled in with the paint bucket that doesn't affect the other color and doesn't go over my lines. So with the line tool, I can divide up the drawing. These lines are too straight. I'll deal with that in a moment. But the point is that I am creating areas, color's too bright, but I'm creating areas where I'm dividing up the flat color to give it a little bit of depth. And when I select the lines, double click the line and delete, there's no gaps at all. It's the um, perfect color in the area and it doesn't overlap. I can of course continue to manipulate these colors, these shapes technically, and maybe make the little bit of curve right here. It's not a straight line. There's a curve. Maybe manipulate the curve up here. The color is wrong. That doesn't matter. Uh, you can manipulate your colors as much as you need. As much as you need when... Um, when it's a separate uh, area of color. I dropped in yellow for a moment and then I changed my mind to a better color. And now what I've got there is the brighter color. And if I say, I, I don't like that at all, I'm gonna do it over. Okay, I'm gonna select the eye for the eyedropper, click that original color and then just drop the original color back and I can start over. It's like nothing ever was was changed. That's very cool and interesting of animate because it thinks about it in just flat shapes, mathematical formulas. Maybe I'll try to draw my line again and then this time also uh, shape my line a little bit better. Problem here is if I, I, I want that line to be kind of a curve right there, but when I let go and draw the line, it's gonna connect to wherever it overlaps. I wanna curve the whole line there, but it's overlapping. If I curve it like that, now there's an overlap over here and there's an overlap over here. So I want a curved line. I could do this. I could make a line not on the character. I could curve the line a little bit, select the line and then place it where I need it. Yeah, it's way more work and such. That's what I wanted. I wanted a curved line there, but the lines are overlapping with each other. It doesn't let me further curve it, they intersect. Okay, draw it elsewhere, curve it, and then put it in place. The snap, I, I don't like the snap usually, so that if it's snapping where you don't want it, that's usually because of the um, magnet being on, on the select tool. And then also I can move it around with my arrow keys. Once I kind of put it in place, I can then move it with the arrow keys to the perfect place. If it's moving too slowly, I can hold shift, arrow keys, and it'll move it further faster. That's what I want. I want that curve on the head there, not a straight line that I can't manipulate. I draw the line outside the character. I move it into place. Now I have there a place where I can fill in the color.
And when I select it, double click to delete that, it's gone. So, okay, I'm starting to fill in a little bit of uh, shading to this character, going by the light source, very simplified that there's light on the left. The light is on the left, so the things that are closer to that are brighter, the things that are further are darker. I would do that with all parts of the drawing. Okay, I want to draw now the, or I want to color the parts of the, of, of the cheeks of the snout. So same idea, uh, I could start the line and if possible, I could manipulate it into the right areas. If it's not possible, I may have to draw the line outside, manipulate it a bit then move it into place. The shortcut I'm using here, N for the line tool, for the brush tool, so N for the line tool, and then temporarily, if you hold the control key, as you hold the control key, you temporarily get the move tool, right? Instead of switching to the move tool and then switching back to the line tool, you can temporarily switch between them. I have the line tool currently active. I hold control that turns on the move tool so I can manipulate the line. Keep holding the control, double click the line to move it into place, still holding control. Let go of the mouse, let go of control, and I'm back on the line tool. Keyboard shortcuts, control, temporarily move. Click to select, move it into place. K for the paint bucket, K for bucket. Get bucket color. Now, here's when you get to the parts about, okay, uh, I, if I have some white color that I want to shade, that's pretty easy. With the color palettes here, I have this whole range of shadings. If something is white, I can just drop it down a few notches to get to a, a darker version of the color. So I get a darker version of the color. Uh, but if you, if you then want to make the highlight, the brighter, there's nothing brighter than white. White is the brightest color. There's no brighter color that I can add there. Um, sometimes what people do is they use uh, shades of blue or purple to do shading instead of shades of gray. So if I go with a blue somewhere here, blue or purple, it's going to have to be a very sort of light blue. I'll, I'll show you in a moment, but I'm going to do a shading there so that then I could do a bright blue, play with the colors in a moment. But this is the con this is the problem with using pure white on any of your drawings. When you want to shade, you can shade, but when you want to brighten, you can't really brighten. There's nothing brighter than white. So what you could do is instead of having pure white as your base color, you can start with a gray if it fits. Maybe that's too gray for that character. But if you start with a gray color, then you've got a darker color there, a darker gray, and then you've got the brighter color. So now I'm seeing the bright white of the cheeks and the dark white of the cheeks. If it was pure white, there's no more white to go. The blue, the technique of using color is a little bit more complex and I don't really use it much. So, oops. so the, um, The, the way to do that is uh, you have to go in and kind of really play with your shades of colors, going to the color wheel and just manipulating the, the color to be, to be exactly within the spectrum that you need. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I also, personally, I don't, I think it's kind of a tough 
way to a lot of people can do this very well but i never myself um mastered it too well so i'm not going to go too far into it but it's that sort of idea you're going to find with tones shadow and highlight want to avoid that then go with not pure white base color and then add the um dating after that want to start with bright white there i'm getting there i'm doing the bright spot on the left very light blue and then on the right side very dark blue leading towards gray You're seeing i'm manipulating it by going to the color wheel over here and there's all these ways to mix your colors Sometimes it works under the S for saturation. Um, for the hue, and then you have to manipulate the colors. All right, so this is the, uh, I would do that for every part of the drawing as much as you want to shade it. Um, keep in mind though, okay, for the model sheets, you can be very detailed. When we get to the part of the animation and the gaming, though, you want to maybe simplify your characters. So I might shade everything in the nose and the ears and everything. But when I when it comes time to animate it and put it in the game and such, then I'm going to struggle a little bit more with the animation, especially if I'm doing frame by frame animation. You might want to simplify. But let's say at this point, this is what I want. This is what I have with the um, with the flat color. I'm going to move on to gradient color in just a moment. Let me pause here. Questions, comments, feedback, or thoughts, either in the chat or in person. Any questions on this coloring technique? Anyone need any help? Okay. So with, with the gradients, very similar in that you're going to divide up areas of the of the character, but instead of filling in solid color, you're going to fill in gradients. Gradients are colors that blend together. So instead of a very abrupt main color to shadow color, there will be a nice blur, a nice blend in between. So instead of the base color to the highlight color, very abruptly, there's going to be a blend. I have my layer of gradient layer that I'm going to jump over to. Actually, let me do this before I before I forget. Uh, I won't do the gradient yet. Let me go back to the flat. Let's say uh, this is what you're going to do then for your color. The whole point is we're on the color scene. And this would be a good starting point to turn in for the color part of the assignment. If you go back to the assignment, it does say also describe the color. And that's going to be in a few ways. This. Let's say I have my colors for my character. And then what I could do is a popular technique is I could take um, just, you know, the brush and fill in a, put in some color dots right here. Draw some color dots. the eyedropper to select the color and then just coloring it with the brush and um, I'm putting examples of my color palette separated from the character itself maybe also remember the eyes I didn't do pure black there and with the white in my case that because I have a gray background like I said early on if you use plain old white background well I can't designate the white color because the background's white so if you have that as a gray color background, you can designate your white colors so you can separate them. So this would be a little bit better for the assignment. Show me, describe the colors that your um, character is made with. Okay, the next level up that is also nice is you can use the text tool to then explain here in very simple text that um, 
this is main verb. You know, however you want to describe your of colors. This one is a uh, fur shade, fur shading, fur dark, whatever. This one is fur highlight, light, light. This one is, what's this one? Oh, this one's, uh, okay, I could go back and say, okay, main body fur, main body fur shading, body fur highlight, because this also fur on the cheeks, but I could call this cheeks um, shadow shading and cheeks um, highlight. This one over here, I should draw it so that it's all closer together, but this is cheek um, main or base color. This one is in my case, inner ear or just ear color. These are eyes. Well, actually for the ear, uh, I use the same color. You can do this to be efficient. Uh, in my case, the ear and the nose, both are the same color. So I could further designate it that way. And I'm not saying, well, you use the same color on seven things. You don't need to list all seven things if you run out of space, but designate that I use this color for these three things or one things or four things. And I, so that's the third level up to do the color model sheet properly. The fourth level, either write the name of the section or the color formula. If you wanna be very technical and you wanna use your color formulas, um, you can do that because it could be useful to know what exact color formula you used for different purposes, maybe on a website, maybe on a banner image of your social media. Uh, these colors are universal, they all have a color formula. So just because I designate this as main fur, well, what shade of orange is that? That cheeks is what shade of that is, is it? And to get your color formula, you can use the eyedropper to select the particular color. You can click on the icon in the um, toolbar or the properties. And it'll tell you right here. In my case, it's hashtag FF9900. For the... For the nose, it happened to be F99, oh, what is it? Uh, FF99FF. So you can see your color formulas there. You can also click on the corner here. It'll tell you there. So that one is C-A-E-E-F-E. -E -E. That almost spells the word cafe. That's funny. So that's a formula uh, to define these colors. So knowing the formula, if, if I want to, I could either write the name of the color or write the formula or both. Just to make a note of this one, FF9900, that's a zero, not an O. And I can further write here that that is hash mark FF9900. Sometimes people do it this way as well. The text color is also the formula. So you can see it in more ways than one. It's up to you. You can have it say the name of the item or the color or both. If you did it this way, that's fine too. That's the color I use. That's the formula. That's fine. It's not that it's going to give you a better grade, but my favorite when I see it from students is that they write the name of the they write the name of the element and the formula. That's what I like the best. It's not going to affect your grade which way you do it, at the very minimum, if you do that, you've colored the character, you set aside the swatches, that's the minimum that I will accept. If you just show me the uh, color model sheet just like that, that's not going to get you the full credit. You need to at least have your color swatches separated, better yet, name them, or put the formulas. That's what I wanted to say before gradients, but 
this is a, this is a technique to make a nice color model sheet. You have an example of the character, hopefully the whole body complete. I skipped that part just for to, to show the lecture, but the whole character colored. You various color uh, color swatches. These are called. And then you name them or describe them, and that counts for the color model sheet. Up to the gradient. So this is coming together in terms of I've got the turnarounds, I've got colors. We'll do expressions in a moment. But let's say for coloring with gradients. Okay, on my gradient layer. We'll do it the easy way, then we'll do the hard way. The easy way is to drop a gradient and kind of manipulate the gradient as is. And the hard way is to first divide up our character and then add multiple gradients. One gradient might be good enough, but usually you'll want multiple gradients and then it's more complex. So we'll do the one gradient first. So within this flat area, I want to add a gradient. Within the tools on the left side over here, we have the paint bucket. So got the gradient. So they hid this. They hid this tool. Uh, it's over here. Where did they hide it? Or they changed it to fill versus. A couple ways to do this. Let's see, there was the gradient tool, gradient tool go. Specific region, all regions. Okay, we'll do it this way. There's a more efficient way, maybe assistance. You can help me find that in a moment. Where's the gradient tool? Put it in the chat. Uh, but here's a here's another way to do it. Instead of choosing a flat color, I can start with a gradient down here. You have these flat colors. You have these blended colors. Let's say this red gradient. This is obviously not my correct colors, but here's how we can start this. Um, I'm going to go the gradient color. And when I then have that color selected, I can uh, manipulate the gradient. Because obviously, if I just drop the color here, OK, well, that's looking weird because the gradient is not blending how I want. That's OK. Um, editing the color. It's up on the window. Color, the window color panel. So this opens up a little panel over here, which I'm going to detach. Got the paint bucket. I've got a fill color. And then here I have the options. OK, do I want a radial gradient? It's a solid color. Do I want a linear gradient? So radial gradient is that it radiates. It starts from a center and it radiates out to another color. It starts from a center and radiates to another color. Um, here we can see that we can manipulate the colors. Um, I, starting with this color over here or starting with this color. This color to this color. I click on any one of these swatches, of, uh, one of these little control points, set colors.
it's not really gradiating at all. It's very weird. It's just like filling, and this is not what I was planning here. If you transform, gradient transform. Yes, transform is going to be very useful. But why is the gradient not gradiating at all? Hmm. Something here. Just do a completely different empty file because I'm curious about something. So just a moment here. Let's say, okay, that's doing a gradient. Why is it doing a gradient there, but not in my main file? Be stuck on the top left corner, huh? Okay. Uh, weird. Well, I guess I'll do this. Okay, uh, I'll drop in. I'll drop in a color. Then I can manipulate the gradient by using the gradient transform tool, which is. Uh, you said it was. Uh, right click the free transform tool, select gradient. Free transform, there it is, okay, good, thank you. So you can manipulate colors as well, similar to the transform tool where you can select pieces and move them around. You can manipulate the gradient, the colors, it's hidden underneath the, uh, free, uh, under the free transform tool. You can click and hold it or you can right click, gradient transform tool. For some weird reason, in my case, my gradients are just not behaving at all. So the way I'm gonna do this is um, transform the gradient by clicking, see the icon says there's a gradient here. So if I click it, yeah, for some reason, my gradient is starting off over there. See here where I have a gradient that I'm trying to add. And when I select it with the free tra uh, gradient transform, it says your gradient color starts here, which makes no sense. I want it to start over here. See, the colors are wrong. I can fix it in a moment. This is so weird that my gradients tool is behaving very, very wrong. But I figured it out here that something's going on in my case. If you're trying to fill in colors and the colors are not blending right, you most likely have to select first your gradient tool, transform tool. There's a center point where the gradient starts from. How far does it go is the, um, there's these three manipulation points over here. Rotate my gradient, squash my gradient, resize my gradient. Resize will show you here. You see that color blending, highlight into shadow, a color into another color. So the the gradient is from that to that. Now the colors are wrong, but I can still manipulate it here. Um, my window color palette, it's going from this color to this color. I want one of the orange colors. It's blending way too dark. So I can double click color, double click the color to then, or uh, then select the brightness of the color. Get darker. It's very finicky. Let me do it again because um, it's easy to lose track. So um, I have flat colors. I'm going to go to the window color palette. 
I have a flat color. Instead of a flat color, radial gradients. I have the color ramp over here. And it's going to go from some color into some other color. I, I think it's better to double click the particular starting point, double click it so you can select your colors, so you can set your color so that you can manipulate your colors. Starting point, ending point, color wheel and either in saturation or brightness, that's what I'm gonna to use to make a brighter version of the color or a darker version of the color. So my gradient's gonna go from here to here. Radial gradient, paint bucket, drop it in. It, it's weird like this that my color's not blending. Most likely I have to go over to the gradient transform, click the color. I don't know why it's starting off over there. I might have some setting on, put it in place, manipulate the flow of it. the squash part of it. So take a moment of manipulating it, but here's where you could then take your drawing to the next level, gradients. You might say, okay, well, I need to finish coloring my character. I, the ears are missing. And let's say I had a body And I'll just do some shoulders. Let's say I've got that. If I start to fill in my paint bucket to these, or uh, the gradient to the um, to the next colors, the um, color might not continue. So if I If I want the color to continue, I have to turn on the lock, which is over here, lock fill. Continue my color. Um, usually you will want the lock fill on so that the color continues. The lock fill is not on, then the color will not continue. It will be its own little area of gradient looks very weird. I want the color to continue in all of the sections of the same color, perhaps. So that lock right there in the paint bucket, when you have the gradient option on, continues the color. So you see here, when I move my gradient around, it follows it fills in in all of the areas. If I don't have that lock in there in a particular section, this is an independent color. When I move this around, it's only being colorized in that area. This is a separate area. I may want that. I may want a certain color gradient in one area and then a slightly different one in another area. Maybe I want that. But if I want the same color in all the areas, okay, I started to add the color in this area, paint bucket, make sure the lock is on, click the next area. Then all of them are linked. When I edit the gradient, keyboard shortcut F. Then when I manipulate the gradient, it will follow with all of them, all the sections. To be honest, it feels like this method is worse than other semesters. I've taught this for several years and I'm doing it again this semester. And suddenly it feels like the tool is just worse this time around. Like it's kind of hard to get it to do exactly what you want. Eventually me wrestling with it, I got it to do what I want. And I think you as beginners might find it way too frustrating 
for, for what it does. So I'm going to show this technique, but I feel like you might struggle with it too much. Definitely ask myself for the assistance if you're struggling with it. But this was very finicky that the colors don't go where I want them. And I have to further manipulate them with the gradient tool. And continuing the colors, I have to fill it in and refill it in. And then it accepts it. I don't know. It seems like or maybe maybe the, maybe Adobe doesn't want you to use this technique or something. I don't know. Uh, and I think even gradients are harder to animate because they're just mathematically complex. So if you want to use this gradient technique, here's what I showed you. But it's kind of a hassle. And me that I've done this for years, it just feels like way more of a hassle than it's worth it. So maybe flat colors. If you want to venture into the gradient colorization, go for it. Ask for help as necessary. But uh, okay, there's a uh, gradients. I want to do that as my assignment for color um, model sheet, either flat colors or um, a flat color like this will be great. Gradient colors. With gradients, you still have to do the uh, color palette swatches. So don't uh, skip that. You spent all the time to make your gradients, but I still need to know what colors you used. So um, still, still set yourself up that you use these certain colors, even if you blend them with gradients. We're up to our first break. So we'll take our break, play with this for a moment, take a 10 minute break. We'll move on to the uh, expressions model sheet, some tips there for drawing and such. And then uh, we'll be at a good place there. So we'll round it up to 105. We'll take a 10 minute break. Uh, 105, we'll be back at 115. Save your work so far, and then we'll go on. All right, let's continue here. So here was some techniques for coloring your character. And uh, that's one of the three model sheets to do this week. Uh, the other kind is the expressions model sheet. So we'll look at a few techniques that could help you in that regard. And then we'll probably then do a little lab time. We're, we're not gonna need the full two and a half hours of lecture. So we'll do a little bit more just on the expressions and then some lab time to work because this is the first assignment. So I've set myself up with the expressions layer, which is empty at the moment. And I have a few options that I could do here. I could take an existing drawing and bring it into this layer to add to it, or I could start over. This is really gonna depend on what you're trying to do. I'm gonna do the copy and paste where I don't have to start over completely. And in my case, back on my original turnaround, this is as far as I had gotten in my character, but this is enough for me to do the expressions because there's a couple techniques that you can do here. You might've seen these when we looked at people's examples. So I'm gonna copy just the face. That's as much as I've drawn on mine, uh, back on my turnaround uh, scene. And then I'll paste it either in center or in place. I'll try mine in the center because then around it, I'll put different expressions. Um, that particular one that I copied and pasted, I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Don't forget to use to maximize the usage of your stage, sometimes when you're zoomed in, you know, when you're zoomed in, you don't realize, oh, there's all this empty space I left in my document that I could have used. So as I've said, I like to use the fit in window zoom level. That way it will automatically be always big. And even when you close your palettes with F4, you'll have the full size. So if you're zoomed in at any other level, it's not going to automatically resize itself. So in my case, I am going to resize. I like the shortcut of Q, quick transform, for example, to resize this. One of the techniques we can do here is we can do the technique of just changing the, the face and leaving the head the same. Or we can do the technique of changing the whole head based on the expressions. We'll look at both. Um, maybe I'll set myself up here on a layer. Um, 
we'll call this uh, mm -hmm. Uh, OG for original head. I'm going to do a version where it's the original head and just the expressions changed, and then a version where it's the full, full expression. But to start off with here, well, I need a basic version of the head. I can select what I've got, copy, paste. Here's a funny thing. If I do um, any one of these pastes, in my, in my case, I had mine in the center. If I paste in center, it looks like nothing happened. But as long as you don't deselect, I have the other copy right there. If I were to deselect at that point, you just copied something on top of itself and it is no longer movable. So if you paste um, and you still have the selection, you can still move it. Sometimes it's useful to do this. You've got something selected and you can go up to modify uh duplicate symbol shape duplicate where they put duplicate Insert, edit duplicate there you go it's there i usually use the keyboard shortcut control d to duplicate this could be very useful you've got something selected you press control d or command d on the mac control d that's like a copy and paste but slightly shifted so that then you can have it selected and then move it into the right place so control D can be very useful just to make quick copies of things. Look how fast that is. You select your element, you control D to duplicate, and then you just move it into place. What I want to do is start to set up a blank version of the expression. This is gonna be my normal expression and I'll write text down at the bottom normal. But then I want the happy version, the angry version, the surprised version, whatever. I think I wrote in the assignment, you need at least three expressions, more if you want. But I want to start with a blank version. So I need to blank the character a little bit. I need to just have a blank head and then the blank mouth. It'll be in my case, easy to blank out the mouth. The way I would do this is with the paint bucket, I'm gonna start with my base color. So the eyedropper to select my base color and just fill in the mouth here so I can draw the different mouths. I would do something similar on the on the head. I, for the eyedropper, select. But the problem is when I start to fill in some of these colors will work, but then, well, that doesn't do what I want. It fills in the color everywhere. And that's because Animate is doing the thing that it does, that whenever there are colors, shapes of color of the same color, connected with shapes of color of the same color, they're the same shape. Even though I see it as an eye, the right eye and the left eye, Animate sees it as a line connected to a line. And therefore, this pupil, I see it as a pupil. If I try to fill in that color, it connects it everywhere. So I need to do a little separation. Depending on what you've drawn, that may be easy or difficult, but here's how I would do it one possible way. The same idea that we said, said previously about lines overlapping, I'm going to make this corner line here overlap here, this corner line overlap here that seems to be separated, separated. It now is no longer connected to the original line. Therefore, if you fill in color, it's a separate element. Same thing with the other eye over here. If I try to color that, it's all connected. I could, of course, get the eraser tool and start to erase parts, but that's actually less finesse than you think. And so I like this technique of using the selection tool and overlapping the shapes. Now there's a cut. And up here on the nose, okay, I guess I'll pull it over here somehow. Often it'll work. And especially if you do not have the snap magnet on, usually that gets in your way. That is so annoying. Um, very few times that this is ever useful to me. You want that magnet off. You'll overlap these colors then, now it's separated. And obviously don't even worry about separating the eye doesn't matter at all. The whole thing's got to go. So it's gone. And there we go. I made a blank version 
of the character so I could start to fill in expressions. I had to do a little bit of uh, manipulation of my original drawing. I duplicated, you saw how easy it was to select Control D, duplicate, and then I had to go in and manipulate it so I can delete the pieces and fill it in with the basic color. So, okay, that'll be a good idea to duplicate that one that I'm gonna use. You know, you can also put things off to the side here. If you put them off of the stage, that can kind of give you a, um, if you put stuff off the stage, that'll kind of tell you about, okay, this is a special thing. It's like a backup. And when you do the window, it won't show it to you. It'll still be there. But I like to put something out on off of the stage as a sort of a backup in case I need to use copies of it and it's too hard to make a copy of a thing already manipulated. And when it's way off over there by itself, I can then easily do the duplicate to put more copies on the stage. I'll have off on the side there, the backup copy, and then I've got blank faces to work on. Okay, I'll do the angry expression. Start with my original color. My original color, I grab it with the eye dropper. I'll have to further check what the sizes of my brushes were and such. But um, at this point, we do the angry expression. Put colors in a moment. How about a scared expression? Sneaky, sneaky, uh, maybe the eyebrows uh, slightly. Not going to be sneaky, actually, but uh, this is the shameful. Yeah, there we go. That's a shameful expression. And then one more. Um, Super happy. Oops. Super unhappy. Super happy. I'll fill in colors. But that's a way to do these uh, expressions where I, I took the starting point of the original head, blanked out the features that I want to change, and then draw the new items on top. That's one possible way. Uh, I'll show a second way in a moment because this this will work great for the assignment. But technically, when expressions are created on characters, they um, it's not just the literal facial features that change, the eyes and, and mouth, but in my case, my eyebrows should also change. You know, if I'm doing the angry eyebrows, so I, I want a furrowed brow in the middle here. If I'm doing the super happy, maybe the eyebrows go up even higher. If I'm doing the uh, sh shamed one or whatever expression this is, they go lower. And it's not even the eyebrows. It, it would be the ears. It would be way better that the ears on this one are also kind of drooping down. Drooping down ears. So this would work great, but Let's say I want to go even further with express expressiveness. Um, I'm going to duplicate this layer and then make changes to it. Uh, this one that I'm going to show you is, is way harder. Not so hard, but it's way harder, more work than the one I just showed you right here because it was just manipulating a couple of things, the, the, the facial expressions mostly. Now I'm going to have to manipulate eyebrows, ears, cheeks, mouth, eyes. So instead of just manipulating two things, it's like four or five things. 
but it's just harder in that way and that it's more work. And most likely I'm gonna have to redraw most of it. So I could start with the starting points here. We'll see how it goes. So in this case, I'm gonna right click the whole layer, right click copy. Guess I can also shortcut here. I forgot about that, duplicate layer. I think that'll do it a little better. Yeah, that'll do it better. I was gonna do copy layer, paste layer, but I think duplicate might even be better. Similar to when I had a selection of something and then uh, control D to just duplicate those things quickly. You can kind of do something similar with a layer. Right click the layer, duplicate the layer. Give a new name. This one will be, uh, I don't know, edit head. In the habit of locking and hiding layers you're not working with so that you don't accidentally edit the wrong thing. And in order for this one to be more expressive, you have to think and plan a little bit. I need to, for angry, I make the, the fur cheeks a little bit spikier. I'm going to make the ears a little spikier. And I'm also going to put on the center of the eyebrows all furrow, furrowed down like this. Um, starting point. So for one change first is we've got these eyebrows that go something like that. Furrowed eyebrows for the ears. Uh, we have to be redrawn. I might, I might go as far as um, maybe first selecting that much of the ear and yeah, deleting it so that I could redraw it spikier. Lasso tool, I'm selecting some part of the ear that I need to redraw, deleting it, delete. Delete key and then that and the cheeks as well. I need them to be much more angled this way. So same idea. Lasso to erase. Let's go somewhere around here. You draw. of that at all, but that's a starting point. And once those new lines are drawn in, then I can fill in the colors. So eyedropper, grab that original color, paint bucket, fill in those colors. Dropper from here, fill in here. It needs to connect better to complete. So I just grabbed with the control, remember keyboard shortcut here, very useful. Hold control to get the so the move tool for a moment. Drag that over. It's complete. I for eyedropper, grab that color. It automatically goes back to your bucket. If it doesn't, K for bucket. Fill that color. I for eyedropper, grab that color. Fill in this. Yes, there's nine pixels here that are wrong. I see them if I zoom in 1,400%. But if I'm at a regular zoom level, it... Uh, might not be worth it to fix. Up over here, this seems close. So I'll fill in this color. The gear now only needs to be this amount. So I will drag this piece to close it here. For that. Don't forget to fill in any empty areas or else when the character moves in front of a background, the invisible parts will be visible. a better, let's say, better angry expression. Classic cat with the fur. Um, with the fur freaking out. Do one more, you'll get the idea. Uh, the expression over here, I also want the eyebrows to be fallen and the ears to be fallen. 
this one. We need the eyebrows to be much lower, not as high as they are right now, maybe just this amount over here. Just this amount somewhere here. And then I want the ears to droop over here somewhere. One way I could also do this is how I did it here. I just drew the new parts. Then it's a matter of deleting the old parts. Uh, again, this technique that I'm showing compared to the previous one is harder because you have to undo what you've done or you can just redraw it. You don't have to start with a starting point like I'm showing here. You just draw it brand new. But you have those three ways. Start with a head, blank it out, make new expression. Or start with a, a one head, uh, blank it out and change some of the details like I'm doing here or draw it over. Let's say I go this way. Okay, well, what I need to do here is remove lines that are no longer necessary. Once again, I would do the things about overlapping colors to separate. It's kind of an interesting way to think. There we go. That's enough to separate. Select that. Delete. I saw it as an ear. Animate sees it as mathematical formulas. This inner part over here, well, um, fill in the color here and here. Need to get rid of these lines. Because they are the same color touching, they won't disappear if I simply um, try to color it. I have to do the overlap trick. Usually it works well with a corner. Sometimes it works with the other edge of the line. Just manipulate it, play with it, get a feel for what's working for your case. And if I pull it this far here, kind of okay. But if I pull it from over here, in my case, I can use this curve that's happening here by pushing it into the right place. The corner often works, but sometimes using the curve and overlapping the curve might be better. And if it doesn't work the first time, you might have to do it a second time. This is the part of the perfectionism about how much time do you have to be a perfectionist. So overlapping these parts. The color to get rid of them. This inner part over here, maybe I don't even need it at all. Other ear. As you practice this enough, it, it just goes quicker and quicker. So wherever there's a different color, the edits that I made here separated this color from this color with colors in between. Doesn't matter how weird it looks in, in the process of it, but by the end result is, okay, separate color, delete that, and then delete the next part. I discovered the keyboard shortcut to jump completely to a different uh, scene somehow. So jumped over to a completely different scene. I wish I knew what that shortcut was. Anyway, so then I'm deleting those pieces and these I don't, I'm not deleting them. I'm just covering them over with a color. Obviously I can't just cover them over because they're connected. But I'm doing the overlap technique. the tiny, tiny bits of pixels that does it even matter when it is the proper dimensions? No, but if it really bothers me, yes, I need to fix those seven pixels, but it, uh, it, that's all based on your time. If you've got plenty of time to work on this, yes, fix every pixel, but we have deadlines. So I'm gonna leave those pixels. No one's gonna know. 
right. Uh, oh, so eyebrows. Uh, I have these lower eyebrows, uh, so then I don't need these upper eyebrows. Um, at this point, um, well, I guess start over here somewhere. have to just redraw somewhere over here. I would probably need the eyebrows to be further down in the head. I'm not going to go this far down this rabbit hole, but I would have to grab this ear and pull it down over here somewhere. So bad. Um, and then... It's over here somewhere. Uh, somewhat. So you're seeing here, it might have just been better to redraw it, but practice is always good. So here I can say at this point, and I'll do the other ones later, but uh, I've got three expressions at least. You can do more. Uh, I did the two techniques in this case where it's uh, just use the same head, just change the face. Or start with a starting point and then change features. Or brand a new layer and just draw them over. Just brand new, draw it over, and with nothing else to manipulate, it's just brand new. Expressions do not need to be fully um, painted, uh, that is, colorized. Um, they can be black and white. I happen to start with a color version of the head, and then I uh, continued to colorize them. Uh, I continued them colorized for the other expressions. I could have started with a black and white head and then made the other expressions black and white. I could start with a color face and then the other ones are black and white. And that's fine. I'm focused on expressions, not colors, on the expression model. On the color model, you have the options of doing the flat colors or the gradient colors. You, do, you still want to give detail to your color swatches. And then the turnarounds, you need at least three poses, complete body poses, front, back, side at minimum. You can do more if you want. Down view, bird's eye view, or worm's eye view. Um, but just like those examples that I showed in class last time, you saw your classmates from a previous semester, what they did. And now today, we've had two days of lecture on these drawing techniques, a couple extra ones as well. Um, Workflow techniques, copying and pasting layers, copying and pasting frames, duplicating things, control D, keyboard shortcuts. That workflow is also part of being a, a, a game designer or animation designer. What are the shortcuts you can do to save yourself effort? Uh, there's always going to be the click this thing and do that thing, but there's also often going to be shortcuts, and the shortcuts are going to be way more faster for you. As we saw there, just select Control D, got a copy, quick. Instead of switching to this tool, to that tool, to that tool, that also saves on your carpal tunnel injury. All of you that are young in this class, you, you don't think you'll worry about that, but someday you might. Using so much keyboard action, using so much mouse action, that affects the carpal tunnel down over here. And if you're not careful, you'll damage that area. So shortcuts, 
uh, reducing your extra movements and such uh, add up in the long term. So this, if we review, just to make sure we've got everything for this first um, assignment, I believe that's everything there. So we'll segue into some lab time. You can ask myself or the assistants, but let's just confirm for the first model sheet, you should have everything that you need at this point. Make a document, make it HD dimensions, 24 frames, name it properly. Um, oh, okay, I did it with layers, whereas we did it with scenes in class. Um, there or will work. Tell me in the chat, actually, which, which do you think makes more sense to you? I might have to change this, but tell me in the chat. You want me to leave this as saying, make each thing its own layer? Or do you want me to set it to make each thing its own scene? Uh, tell me in the chat. You want them as layers or as scenes? All today and yes, uh, Monday, I was doing it as scenes. I kind of like scenes better because you can have then 50 layers to accomplish what you need. And then you just go to each particular scene and you can just focus on a thing. Whereas if I tell you on, on layers, you probably then have to make folders to further organize but we're getting the votes here coming in as scenes. So here's democracy in action. Okay, let's do it as scenes. I'm gonna change that there in a moment. I'll change these to say, call this a scene, turn around, scene, expression, and scene colors. I'll fix that in a moment. So you're gonna need a scene of turnaround, um, at least three angles, a scene of expressions, at least three expressions. Color. Uh, color the character, describe the colors. You can add the color names or the color formulas or both. You can go look at this video that is very useful to give you advice and inspiration on this topic. There's also another link up on the top there for another great little video. Uh, this is a, a text uh, post actually on model sheets. You're going to upload your FLA file as is. No need to convert it to anything. Once you finish with each scene, save it, upload it to uh, Canvas, and 15 points divided as their deadline of next week. You'll have one more day of one final lab time to get it perfectly perfect. It'll be due on the 11th. Next week, we're moving on to the next topic as we're getting closer to the animation and gaming stuff, another sort of prep um, module, and then we'll start that moving forward. So we'll end at this point. I'll put my example up on Canvas. If you want to look at an example of how I did it, I'll put the video up on Canvas once it's finished processing. And we'll segue into some lab time if you want to stay and work. We'll wrap up officially at 2.30 and uh, work at your own pace.